An Investor's Guide to Wholesaling Real Estate, last updated on February 24, 2019 by Mark Ferguson. You can make a lot of money in real estate by wholesaling houses, but it is not easy. Many gurus love to teach wholesaling as an easy way to get rich without any money to start. It can be a wonderful business, but it is by no means easy, and it usually takes at least a little money. This article goes over how wholesaling works, what you should realistically expect in the business, and how to be successful. Many people may not be familiar with what a real estate wholesaler does, but it is pretty simple. A wholesaler buys and sells houses very quickly without doing any repairs, or they get a property under contract and assign the contract to another buyer. Many real estate investors start out in wholesaling because it can be an inexpensive way to make money. Honestly, most people who want to wholesale don't make a lot of money because they give up due to the hard work and the dedication it takes to build a successful wholesaling business. The wholesalers who stick to it, build systems, and persevere can make millions of dollars in the business. What is real estate wholesaling? Wholesaling is based on buying and selling houses very quickly without making any repairs. A wholesaler will get houses under contract well below market value, and then sell the houses or assign the contracts to another investor. The wholesaler sells the houses to investors who can pay with cash, or cash-like loans because there is no time to get a loan, and there are no inspections, or appraisals. Just about every owner-occupied buyer will need to complete those items to get a loan, and that is why the properties are sold to other investors. The wholesaler does not need to use their own money because they use what is known as a double close or an assignment of contract. When you double close, the title company will use the money from the end investor to pay the original seller so the wholesaler does not have to come up with the cash. When an assignment is used, the wholesaler simply assigns the contract they had with the seller to the end investor, and the end investor becomes the buyer. How does a wholesale deal work? The process to complete a wholesale deal can seem complicated, but it is simple once you figure out how all the moving parts work and have the right people helping. Here is how the process works. Find the deal. A typical wholesaler might use postcards sent to absentee owners to try to buy the house. Absentee owners are sometimes more motivated because they don't live in the house and may have bad tenants or no tenants. The wholesaler could also find a deal in many other ways, including the MLS, auctions, driving for dollars, FSBOs, etc. Get the house under contract. Once the wholesaler finds a potential deal, they need to talk to the owner and try to get the house under contract. The wholesaler needs to know what their investor buyers will pay for the house and get it under contract for less than that. The wholesaler makes the difference between what they get the property under contract for and what the end buyer will pay. Getting a house under contract means the seller and wholesaler sign a contract with all the terms of the deal. Find a buyer to assign the contract to or double close. Once the wholesaler has the house under contract, they need to find a buyer for it. Wholesalers should have a list of buyers they will send the deal to. Each wholesaler is different in how they handle the buyers as some will offer the house on a first-come, first-served basis, and some will have a bidding system where the highest bidder gets the deal. Set up the closing with the title company. One of the key parts of a successful wholesaling business is finding an investor-friendly title company. Not every title company will complete a double close or be familiar with how wholesalers work. Most wholesalers require the end buyer to submit a non-refundable earnest money deposit with their title company. Set up the closing. The title company will make sure the property has a clear title. Once a clear title is confirmed, the closing will be set up and the title company will create the paperwork and schedule a date sign. The wholesaler needs to make sure the property is in the same condition as when the end buyer says it and that the property is accessible and vacant. There are many steps to completing a wholesale deal, and it is not as easy as many people make it seem. The toughest part is finding deals that are good enough for the end buyer to want and the wholesaler to make money on. What does a wholesaler have to be careful of? As a wholesaler, you must take the title to the house or sell your interest in it. You cannot introduce a buyer and seller and then take a commission or any other type of fee. It is against the law to practice real estate without a license. This is why wholesalers will assign a contract or use a double close to complete a deal. This could be considered practicing real estate without a license as well. There may be some cases where you can get paid on a per lead basis whether the property closes or not. Please consult an attorney for specific legal advice. How much money does a wholesaler make per deal? The wholesaler makes their money by charging the end buyer more than they get the house under contract for. How much they make varies greatly based on the wholesaler, the deal, and other factors. Some wholesalers may only make a couple of thousand dollars on each deal, 
while others could make to $100,000 on a large multi-million dollar deal. I buy a lot of houses from wholesalers, and some are happy with $5,000 per deal, while others make $10,000 to $20,000 per deal. The wholesalers making more money per deal have a large buyer's list, and often can get buyers to pay more than their asking price. How much can wholesalers pay for properties? One of the most important parts of wholesaling houses is knowing what your buyers will pay. No one will buy properties if they are priced too high. Many flippers will use a percent of the ARV to determine what they will pay for a house. ARV means after repaired value and is what the house will sell for once it is fixed up. The 70% rule is commonly used among flippers and states. The investor will pay 70% of the ARV minus repairs. If the ARV is to $100,000 and the house needs $30,000 in repairs, the investor would pay $110,000. Minus $20,000 equals $110,000. There are a lot of costs when flipping houses besides just making repairs, which is why flippers buy houses so cheaply. Many wholesalers do not realize the discount their buyers require. Some areas of the country may have flippers that will pay more for flips or less. You can see the percentage of ARV ranges from 65 to 85 based on the market and competition. You only see very high percentages in extremely hot markets. Once the wholesaler knows what the investor will buy properties for, they have to get them under contract even cheaper to make their money. Obviously, a good wholesaler has to know values very well in their area and have an idea of what it will cost to repair a property. How can you find properties to wholesale? We keep talking about how important it is to get a great deal when wholesaling. But how do you actually do it? Below you will find many ways to find cheap properties. I flip many houses and I find deals from the MLS, auctions, Craigslist, Zillow and my own direct marketing. I find that most successful wholesalers tend to find their deals mostly through direct marketing. Drive for dollars. Driving for dollars is when you look for vacant houses while driving, walking, riding your bike, etc. When you find a vacant house, you try to contact the owners to see if they will sell it to you. You can do this by sending a letter, postcard, knocking on the door, leaving a note, or trying to find their phone number. Direct mail. Direct mail involves sending postcards, letters, or some other type of mail to potential motivated sellers. We send out mailers to thousands of homes in our area. We use specific lists like absentee owners to target people who are more likely to sell. I use a company that creates the letters, creates the lists, and even has a call center to answer calls for me. Auctions. It is possible to get great deals from auctions but tough for many wholesalers to use them. Most auctions require actual cash very quickly after the auction is over. It is really hard to assign an auction contract or complete a double club. What does it mean to assign a contract? Assigning a contract is a simple concept. The contract has a clause that allows it to be assigned, meaning that another person can step in and become the buyer without the seller's permission. A wholesaler can actually sell the contract to another investor without buying the house. Anyone else can step in and be the buyer as long as they buy according to the terms of the contract. How to use a double close to wholesale a house. It is possible for wholesalers to buy a house and then sell it immediately without using their money. You need a great title company that will do a double close. The seller sells the house to the wholesaler who immediately sells to the end buyer. The title company uses the end buyer's money to pay the original seller. Please check your state laws to make sure this strategy is legal in your area. How does a wholesaler find buyers? Most wholesale deals cannot be advertised on the MLS which is what real estate agents use to sell houses. You can only list a house for sale that you own. And wholesalers typically do not own the property when they are trying to find buyers. They just have it under contract. That is why wholesalers need to find buyers as well as deals. A wholesaler must also close very quickly in order to assign the contract or complete a double close within the contract period. They usually do not have time to search for new buyers after they find a deal. It is best if the wholesaler has a buyer's list before they get a deal. Here are some tips on finding buyers. REI meetings. Real estate investor meetings or meetups are a great place to find investor buyers. You can find the meetings by searching for local REI clubs in your area, talking to other investors, or looking online. You can find wholesalers and cash buyers at the meetings. Check recent sales. Search public records to find who bought houses recently for cash, as they are most likely investors. I just received a letter from a wholesaler who contacted me because I had purchased a house for cash. Hang out where investors who buy houses hang out. Go where the investors go, trustee sales, auctions, and tax sales are all great places to find investors. Look for other house buyers. Many people who are looking for off-market properties are also investors who flip or are buying rentals. 
they are not all wholesalers. Look for people who are looking for deals and ask them if they are buyers as well. Networking. Talk to all your local contacts, title companies, lenders, agents, contractors, etc. to find other buyers. Can wholesalers work with real estate agents? I mentioned that wholesalers usually do not list their houses with real estate agents and the MLS. Not only can the houses not be listed because the wholesaler does not own them, but the wholesaler would have to pay a real estate agent to sell the house as well. There is often not enough room for the wholesaler to pay an agent and make money. That does not mean that wholesalers cannot work with real estate agents in other ways. I buy houses from wholesalers all the time, and some of the best wholesalers I found resulted from me being a real estate agent. Another way to find buyers is through real estate agents. I found a few wholesalers to buy from because they sent an email to all the real estate agents in my area saying they also sold houses to clients who were represented by real estate agents. I replied that I was an investor and wanted to be put on their buyers list, which I was. I know many wholesalers who send their properties to real estate agents. They tell the agent that if their buyer is interested, the real estate commission needed to be added onto the price the wholesaler is trying to sell the house for. For example, a wholesaler is selling a house for $100,000 to a regular cash buyer on their list. If they sold the house to a buyer using an agent, the price would be $100,000 plus whatever commission the real estate agent wanted to take. Can you be a real estate agent and wholesaler? A lot of people say you cannot be a real estate investor and a real estate agent. I am both and love being both at the same time. I do not do much wholesaling because I flip the houses I buy and buy rentals. I still use techniques wholesalers use to get deals. Why do people say investors should not be agents? Some people think that it hinders their business to work under the laws and regulations real estate agents must work under. Real estate agents are held to a higher level in disclosure and accountability. I think this is a good thing, but some investors think it is a bad thing. I think being an agent gives me more accountability to sellers because they can look up my license and see I am a professional instead of some random person off the street. I have to disclose that I am an agent, which I have no problem with, and that I may be buying the property below market value, which is fine with me as well. When I buy off market, there are no commissions, which easily justifies buying a house for less than it would sell for on the MLS. I am very honest that I am buying houses below market and outline the advantages of selling to me over listing the house with an agent who pays for the closing costs on a wholesale deal. When a seller sells a house on the MLS, the seller usually pays for title insurance, some of the closing costs, and real estate commissions. The deals are structured completely different when they are wholesaled. The wholesaler will transfer the closing cost responsibility to the end buyer. I think in almost every house that I bought as a wholesale deal, I paid for the title insurance and closing costs as the buyer. If you are the buyer, this is an extra cost you need to be aware of. I have even had some wholesale companies try to tack on marketing and other service fees for the buyer to pay without mentioning it beforehand. What is bird dogging? You may also hear the term bird dogging and wholesaling together. A bird dog is someone who finds leads for wholesalers or investors. I mentioned that it may be illegal to take part of a commission or a fee directly related to the sale of a house. Bird dogs often get around this by taking a fee for each lead they give to an investor, whether the investor gets the deal or not. Wholesaling can be a way to get started investing in real estate without much cash or experience. That does not mean it is easy or the money will come quickly. It takes a lot of work, and it's easy to get yourself in trouble if you do not know what you are doing. Take your time to learn how the business works. Learn from others, learn your market, find buyers, and do deals the right way, and you can create a successful business.